Hello everyone and welcome to another new review and this is gonna be on Cyborg, the new DCU title from issues 1 to 6. We start with the backstory of Cyborg, showcasing how he became the superhero he is today. Cyborg even spoke about dying. He died two times. The first one was because of his father and that's where his father was there for him. He helped him get back on his feet and he helped him to become this machine he is right now to become one of his greatest experiments ever. The second time Cyborg died as well, but his father was there for him. But when he, thir when he died for the third time, that's when his father wasn't there for him. But something actually happened to Cyborg that changed him, that changed his technology, which basically was regenerating. Cyborg could actually regenerate after he got destroyed by this unknown being, he regenerated. Later on, somewhere else, we saw these things that are called Techno Sapiens. These Techno Sapiens were infecting humans of a universe that is unknown to us yet. These Techno Sapiens kept infecting these humans, these people who were fighting back and they kept wanting more. They kept wanting more of this technology these techno sapiens possessed. Now somewhere else we saw Cyborg getting experimented on. His father wants to know more about his regenerating power. How Cyborg technology came to the stage where it started to regenerate Cyborg's cells. But not only that, Cyborg right now can create anything that comes to his mind. He can create weird different weapons, different styles. And he's still getting hang of it. They only saw him with his colleague, Sarah Charles. Now this person is really interesting and really powerful to this character, Cyborg, you know. Both of them are always talking together. Cyborg feels like he can be himself when he's with Sarah, you know. He's always talking to her about the shit that happens with him. And that's when they both leave out, you know, they're gonna go outside, have a coffee, have some dinner, just get out of the lab, do something different. And that's when they see these protesters protesting about how Cyborg possesses this fancy technology that cured him, that made him whole again. He might not be human, he might have some machine in him, but he's whole again, unlike these people who have suffered horrific accidents that caused them legs hands, eyes, and there's this guy who's called Bobby. He was protesting about how he's possessing this hunk of junk. He didn't want this. He wanted a machine that could, that he could use, you know, that he could tie his shoe with. And you can see how deeply hurt he was that he couldn't do those things. So we basically see that he wants the same technology that Cyborg possesses but he didn't know where to get it from, at least yet. Later on, so these techno sapiens are getting closer and closer to the source of their technology. As we move on, we meet these people, these humans from this other universe, who are actually after Cyborg's technology as well, just as much as the techno sapiens are. Later on, so Cyborg in the dream sequence, talking about how he became famous, how people start recognizing him, and how people start asking him weird questions such as does Aquaman smell like fish is Batman really part bat all these weird questions were asked to Cyborg one of them was also does Cyborg dream and the answer is yes he dreams horrible dreams they only got introduced to this new character in the Cyborg universe Smokey Cyborg pet. I believe that this pet is going to be a really big part of Cyborg's universe of Cyborg's life his personality, his character, you know, it shows how Cyborg is only, is always only. Whenever you want to talk to someone, he's talking to the cat. Whenever you want to show off something, he's showing off to the cat, you know. He feels like he can't tell her whatever he wants. And that cat wouldn't bother. That cat wouldn't care if he's a human or a machine, you know. She'll always be there for him. Because cats, well, they can't judge. And that's his insecurity. Cyborg has an insecurity about himself, you know. He doesn't want to show the world what he really is. 
So he always tries to keep his listening from people, so he won't frighten them, so he won't, uh, you know, get any features from them, etc. and etc. And you see these in the panels of this book, you know, we saw how Cyborg is showing off his powers to this cat, but yet the cat gets shocked of how Cyborg technology is working. She was like, Eh, what? No, you know what? I'm gonna back off. Elsewhere we saw Bobby, the protester who was protesting about not getting the good treatment, the fancy technology that Cyborg possesses, and that's where he goes underground to these people. These people possesses the same technology that Cyborg does, and they implement it in Bobby's body, on his hand and his eye. He doesn't really regenerate, but more like he gets uh, a, a mechanic arm, a mechanic eye that actually work, you know, it's not just a piece of junk that is f there to fill the space. Now later on we saw that Cyborg is testing out his new powers. Later on we saw that the Techno Sapiens has made it to Cyborg's world. And they landed in the place of Bobby after he got his mechanic eye and his mechanic arm. The Techno Sapiens did not only land in Bobby's place, but they also landed in everywhere around this earth. Star Labs, uh, you know, Gotham, Metropolis, everywhere. Cyborg was fighting off these Techno Sapiens. After the landing of the Techno Sapiens, more humans were infected by the technology that they possessed. The fight became too big for Cyborg to fight these Techno Sapiens on his own. And that's where he called for backup, the Metal Man. Not only that, but we also got to know that the Justice League are also busy fighting the same Techno Sapiens that Cyborg is fighting in front of Star Labs. Later on, we saw that Cyborg encountered the person who killed him for the third time, and that person was Sarah Charles but from a different universe, and she asked for Cyborg's help to stop this ongoing war that his father started. Well, his father from another universe. Sarah Charles began to explain what happened in her universe, and she started explaining that has a Star Labs, has a top secret, experiments, the Red Room, and the accident. But this time, when the accident happened, it didn't get a victory stone, but it got his parents, Sayelis and his wife. Sayelis refused to let his wife die. He was convinced that he could save her, that he could undo the damage of the accident. Using the nanotechnology that was locked up in the red room, and, the and he started experimenting using the tech that came through that accident, the tech that he didn't understand, the tech that came from a different world. Silas became real obsessed with it until he became this man machine. And as soon as Silas mixed up the nanotech and the technology that came through that accident, it created some kind of a, a signal that attracted these techno sapiens. And that's where these techno sapiens started infecting the people of Sarah Char's universe. And the first one to get infected was Silas' wife. And she was the one to kill Sayelis. So Sala Charles took it upon herself to find the cure to this cyber parasite. And this whole time she was going through each and every universe to find a perfectly running cyborg, aka Victor Stone. And that's where she stumbled on the universe of cyborg, of our cyborg, of this earth. And that's why she needs his help to cure these people from the cyber parasite. And the solution to this problem, the solution to these techno sapiens is cyborg. Cyborg's technology, not him, but his technology. And that's where we see a big fight going on between cyborg and these techno sapiens until he gets hit. And that's where Sarah Charles takes him away to her universe, where they start planning out what to do and how to do it meaning how to defeat these techno sapiens they finally come up with a plan and they get back to cyborg's earth that's when cyborg taps in into the operating system of the techno sapiens and he starts rewriting it he starts curing these techno sapiens and the infected ones and the more technology 
sucked into his own system, into his own body, the more power he gained until there was an overload in his system and he actually exploded. But the moment he exploded, he regenerated back full human body, which shocked Sarah Charles from the other universe. She was like, what? She told Cyborg to tell Sarah Charles of his universe that he actually likes her, that he actually loves her. And she told him that Sarah from your universe will love you any way you are, you know, no matter how you look like, she's just gonna love you because that's who Sarah is, you know, in any universe, she's always gonna love Victor Stone. So she told him to go out there and tell Sarah Charles that, she actu that he actually loves her. Now later on we saw that Cyborg was the main man. He saved the entire world from these Techno Sapiens the moment he cured them uh, from the disease that was in their system. Superman, Batman, Shazam, Flash, Aquaman, Wonder Woman, they all thanked Cyborg for what he did and he was the superhero of the day. But there was one problem. Bobby got his hand back. Which means he has the same abilities that Cyborg possesses right now. He regenerated his arm to a full human arm. I think Bobby is going to play a big role in the, in the upcoming story arcs of Cyborg. And I'm really excited to see how he's going to be a, a part of, of you know Cyborg's universe. Is he going to be a good guy? Is he going to be a bad guy? Um, is there a side effect to having these regeneration powers? You're all gonna find out in the next issue, which is gonna be issue number seven. And not only that, but we saw Cyborg, Victory Stone, showing himself to Smokey, to his pet, full body human. That was the end of issue number six, and I was like, oh my god, the writer topped it, you know, he, he he's just amazing. He's done it in a pretty good way. I really loved how he ended it. He showed us that Cyborg can finally be human. But for how long? Is there a side effect to this regeneration, to this ability of getting rid of the technology on his body and just showing off his human his, his human body? I'm really excited to see uh, how Se Seven Nation gonna play out. I'm really excited to see what's gonna happen next. Who's the next villain for Cyborg? The first six issues were pretty good i really love the new villains the techno sapiens i think they're gonna play a big role in the upcoming up, upcoming story arcs of cyborg now let me give you an overall first of all i love the covers of these books i loved each and every one of them but i think my favorite is going to be the sixth issue cover i think it's just brilliant you know it just showcases uh what this what is the issue really all about you know it's a man who's a machine becoming a whole man again you know he's finally the man he always dreamt of being who he, he was before you know before the accident happened he was a a regular human being and i thought that was a really cool touch to the cover uh, not only that i loved the art i loved the fighting scenes that happened throughout this six issues were scripted pretty well i really loved how the artist it did the transformations in his hands you know uh, in cyborg's hand when he whenever he transforms his hands into a weapon it was done in a pretty detailed good way so i love that about the issue as well and the writing was phenomenal you know he the uh, the writer uh added a lot a lot to cyborg's character like uh the pet smoky uh sarah charles was already there but the pet smoky was something really cool because it shows us another side of C cyborg it shows us a side where Cyborg needs to talk to someone. He needs to share his secrets with someone. And that pet is his um, well of secrets, let's call it. So that was it pretty much. I'm going to give it a rating of a 9 out of 10. It was phenomenal. I really loved it. I recommend it to you guys. Go ahead, check it out. I think you guys are going to love it. If you're a Cyborg fan, if you're a Teen Titans fan, I think you're going to love this story arc. If you are a fan or if you are a new reader i think you're gonna uh get into this character real quick and you're gonna get where this character coming from you know father issues um 
you know, teenage issues, well, he's not a teenager right now, but he was in his 20s, he's still dealing with different issues, uh, people, love, and many other different things. I think a lot of people can relate to this comic book. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know your thoughts right down below, and don't forget to hit uh, the like button, subscribe, and see you guys around.